Hello and welcome to 4 Minute Film School. I'm V from the A-Team and today we are talking about how to create artificial sunlight indoors. Let's go! I'm here with director of photography, Carissa Dorson. She has graced us with her presence because she is a narrative feature film and short film DP. And that's perfect because in today's scene, it's a narrative sort of mysterious, spooky kind of scene. What's the idea behind it? So we wanted to create sort of a, a mysterious daylight interior scene that still has some shadows to it and good amount of contrast. The first shot of this scene is sort of a moving master. It goes from a wide shot and then sort of pans over into a tight, more close up shot. So you have a lot to play with because you need the light to work in both cases. The first light you placed was actually for depth. It was a light in the other room behind our actress. What was that? So we had a 300D2 and it was actually shooting through a gobo that we created out of RAM board. We cut some slots in it to look like blinds and we set that up and shot the 300D through it and then just kind of shaped it so that it was a perfect box. You also had a large window off camera right that you could use for a sort of natural frame to put lights through. So we put through a 300D too, again, and this light was just kind of bringing up the ambience of the room. We had a third 300D too that was taking the place of the actual sun because we had blocked out the sun with a floppy. So we had a 300D coming in from a higher angle that was creating a pattern on her when she walked into the room. You also had some kind of diffusion on that light, correct? Yeah, so we put up a small piece of opal that was only working for her final mark because when she hit that mark, it was looking a little bit harsh on her skin. Adding haze was a great just final touch to the scene. And it makes sense because it's it looks like a dusty library but it also adds some fill and it adds a nice glow to the scene. So for the second shot in the scene, it was again a wide shot and this time you're looking straight at the window. At first you had some natural sunlight coming through that window, but you put up a floppy and completely cut it out. Why is that? Right, it was coming in at an angle where it wasn't hitting exactly where I wanted and it was also bouncing off the wall and just brightening up the whole room. And I wanted this shot to be a lot darker and I wanted her to almost be silhouetted in it. So I cut out the sun completely and added our 300D2 back in. That was armed directly over the window so that it was coming straight in. There was still a lot of bounce off the floor that was hitting her, so we brought in some duvetine and just lined the floor with it. Duvetine is a really helpful absorbent material that's really handy to have in your kit or in your car. And then for your final shot, for your close up, when your model looks up from the book and kind of looks right past camera, um, you added another light. What was that? So we brought one of the 300 D2s inside and bounced it off of some beadboard and actually created a book light. So it was bouncing off the beadboard and then we set up some bleached muslin for that, for it to go through and hit her. I wanted it to be flattering on her, but as if it was just light bouncing from the inside of the room. And we used a four x four floppy on camera left to just get rid of any bounce that was hitting her on that side. I think sometimes less is more, and it really depends on what the scene calls for. But as we were turning off lights, it made me realize, oh, this actually looks really beautiful and more true to life. So it's good to approach things in a more subtle way and sometimes just try turning off a light. So we actually shot this scene twice. We shot it once with a cinema camera and once with an iPhone. A lot of you are always writing into the comments saying, hey, we don't have a red, we don't have an Alexa, all I have is an iPhone. The lighting is what really matters when it comes to cinematography. You can still get a beautiful image as long as you know how to manipulate the lighting. So let's take a look at the whole scene.
So what are some rules of thumb that we can keep in mind when shooting a scene that's supposed to imitate sunlight indoors? Well, sunlight is a hard source, so don't be afraid to use a hard light. And in this case, the hard light was very helpful in making those patterns, the shadows from the blinds. Second of all, you wanna match the temperature to the outside. We were seeing outside, and outside is around 5,600 Kelvin, so you wanna use a light that matches that. Third, sunlight tends to bounce everywhere. So you want to use a lot of negative fill that's hitting the floor, that's hitting the walls. You can really control that with negative fill. And that brings me to our common question this week, which is describe a time when you had to fight the light, either sunlight or artificial sunlight that you created yourself. The best answer in the comments is going to win our new RGB light. This is the Aperture MC, the newest addition to the Aperture family. If you find these videos educational or helpful to you in any way, please give us a like on the video and let us know and subscribe to the channel. Thank you, that's it for us. If you wanna follow us on our social media, our links will be down below. That's it for this episode. Have a great day, bye.